Okay, and welcome to the Davis Use Case webinar being presented by L Real Health on Autism Screening. This is a Davis Use Case webinar for the value of health IT. My name is Arnold Simmons, and I'm the manager of quality and patient safety here at HEMS, and it's my pleasure to moderate this presentation. Core to the HEMS mission is promoting the use of health information and technology to improve the quality of healthcare delivery. HEMS promotes and advocates the integration of clinical decision support and best practice guidance, access to clinical data to analyze progress and information and technology enable patient safety tools for all healthcare organizations, clinicians, patients, and community members as vehicles for improving patient outcomes. The HEMS Nicholas E. Davies Award of Excellence is the pinnacle of the HEMS Value Recognition Program. The Davies Award recognizes outstanding achievement of organizations from around the world who have utilized health information and technology to improve patient outcomes and value. The Davies Award winning use cases have been peer reviewed to validate state sustainable, improved patient and business outcomes resulting from health information and technology enabled care delivery. So it's my pleasure to welcome our speaker for today's webinar, Dr. Rajiv Modak. Uh, Dr. Modak, thank you for joining us, and you can begin when you're ready. Good morning. My name is Dr. Rajiv Modak. I'm Pediatric Medical Director at El Rio Community Health Center. Um, we are comprised of six pediatric clinics across Tucson, Arizona, and I work at the Southwest Pediatric Clinic location. I wanted to talk with you today about some of our work that we've been doing around uh, autism screening, specifically improving our autism screening rates. As you all know, autism has been increasing in numbers over the past few years, and we think this is largely due to increased surveillance um, and increased screening. What we know as of this year is that about 1 in 59 children have been diagnosed with autism, and it's very clear that autism can be diagnosed by the age of two in most children. But still, the average age of diagnosis remains at four to six years old. So this is a problem because we know that early detection and treatment can lead to better outcomes for these kids. Because of that, the Academy of Pediatrics has recommended standardized screening for all children at age 18 months and 24 months with a standardized tool, the most common tool being the MCHAT, or Modified Checklist for Autism. So we wanted to identify what were the barriers that we had to, to high screening rates. And we found a few that we identified. One was the fact that patients don't come in. You know, oftentimes kids are behind on their well checks and they don't come in in time to actually have a 24-month well check and, and have that screening done. In addition, all the providers were not consistent with AEP recommendations regarding screening, so there was variability. I'm also, as many of you know, providers are really busy in their clinics and sometimes they just forget to, to do screening tests because they're overwhelmed with the other work they have to do. And then the last thing was that providers had no way of being accountable. There was no reporting, no one knew what their screening rates were. So we chose to work locally within our clinic, Southwest Pediatrics, to say, where are we? And what are our results? And what we found was that when we looked at some, our baseline data, which at that time was in 2016, what we saw was that we were pretty good at screening for anemia and lead, but we fell when it came to screening for autism, and we were hovering around the 50 to 60 percent mark. But even that was better than other clinics within our organization, where their autism screening rates were down just around 25 percent. So our first step was to say, okay, we need to bring more patients in for their well checks so that we can um, increase our screening. And one way we were able to do that by, was by utilizing um, an analytic tool online called Relevant. And our IT analysts were able to create a report on Relevant, and you can see what this report looks like, which identified using our, mining our EHR, identify gaps in care, which are the kids that actually are overdue for their well checks and need to come in. So we were able to utilize this list um, so that our MAs could provide outreach. And the way we did that 
was that on a weekly basis, MAs would generate a new list in relevant, and then they, we would just use postcards. We would send postcards out to all the kids who needed well checks to have them come in. And each month, we would regenerate the list. Some of those kids were dropped off if they came in, and otherwise, we'd remind them again. But in addition to bringing in kids with well checks, we wanted to make sure we weren't missing kids, opportunities in kids who were already um, coming in for other visits. So we decided to do a daily huddle where we went through our schedule each day, the MAs did, and they would go through and identify those kids who were coming in who needed a well check. And they had the authority to convert them automatically to a, from a sick to a well visit without discussing with the provider. We gave them that ability. So the next part was um, actually working on improving screening rates on the kids that came in. So the way we did this was we had a, a QI team, a quality improvement team, core team that consisted of me as the physician leader, an MA, um, an LPN, and then our IT analyst who worked with us. Really important, we looked at our baseline data, we looked at the barriers that I discussed before, and we really looked to see all this, who all the stakeholders were that could influence our results. And we proposed a, a new workflow that would hopefully help improve our results. We use the PDSA, the Plan Do Study Act methodology um, for our quality improvement project. And this is a general workflow, but the idea was once we had our, our framework, we brought in all of our stakeholders. We had a large meeting with all of the providers and all the MA staff to go over what our proposed workflow change was, to show them the baseline data, and then to get their feedback as to what barriers we could overcome, did, did they have any issues with our workflow? We wanted to make sure they were completely engaged in the process. And then we were able to proceed. So the major principle for this process was changing autism screening from being provider-driven to being medical assistant driven, meaning it's no longer in the hands of the provider to administer and order these screening tests. We automated it so that the MAs did this at every 24-month visit. And the way we're able to do that is by adding it to their MA checklist. And I'm sure organizations have similar kind of protocols where all the MAs have to follow certain protocols when they buy a patient. And this is our 24-month uh, protocol for our MAs. And what we did was we added this administration of the MCHAT for autism screening. And also, at the same time, we added anemia and lead screening um, with this same exercise. This is an example of our MCHAT forms. They're laminated forms that we would give to the patient, the parents. They would fill them out. And then this is our EMR NextGen. And our medical assistants would enter the results into NextGen, which would score the results. And then any results that were failed or positive, the MAs would notify the providers. So one thing that was really important as we wanted to monitor our progress uh, so we could give feedback to our team was we used, again, our relevant platform. And our IT analysts were able to create uh, a report in relevant that showed from month to month what our progress was um, in our screening rates. And what was really beneficial about it for a few things, number one was that we could access this on our own. So we didn't ask, we didn't need to ask IT to, to give us this report. We had access to this report at any time. But also, we were able to actually look at the different clinic sites. We could look at how our site would compare to other sites within the organization. And even better, we could actually break it down by provider team. And on the far right here, you can see these are individual provider teams that you could go in to see your individual screening rates. <clears throat> this is really a powerful tool to have people be able to, to look at their screening rates and be able to show our team's data month after month. And I want to show you the results of our project at Southwest first. And what was interesting phenomenon was even during our discussion phase of our project, um, we actually were able to see a remarkable increase um, in screening rates of 10% just when we started talking about the project. Once we actually implemented the project, we had a <clears throat> much more significant increase. And we went from somewhere between 50 and 60% over two years by the middle of 2018, we were hovering at about 95% screening, which is fantastic for us. So with this positive outcome that we had to our, our screening uh, protocol, our, our QI project, the next step, as we said, was we wanted to spread this to all of our clinic sites within the organization. 
Um, the way we do that in our structure is we, we have to put it into a policy. So, for, for MAA's protocol to include um, autism screening. So, first of all, we present our group presented our data to our LREO board of directors who were really enthusiastic about it. And then we presented it secondly to our clinical advisory committee. This is our internal uh, group that is comprised of a number of leaders across the organization. And they meet monthly to review current policies that we have in place and then also to approve new policies for consideration. And after seeing our data and seeing our results, this was, uh, again, unanimously approved for spread. So we shared our playbook, as we call it, of integrating um, autism screening into the MA protocol with all of the other clinic sites with, uh, within El Rio. And in 2017, they started implementing um, our same workflow. What we saw and we were really gratified to see was that after implementation from 2017 until August of this year, we had a steady increase in autism screening rates. We went from under 40% to over 80% in just over 18 months, um, which is across the whole organization. So this is really a successful project for us, and we were really, really gratified that we were able to have this spread to other sites. And I think we can't overlook the importance of data and our IT analysts in helping us uh, drive this project. I think, first of all, having IT give us access to relevant reports so we could identify gaps in care really helped to drive up the number of well checks we were able to do, and likewise screen. Secondly, it was crucial to have um, autism screening rates month by month available because we would be able to present that to our teams and really encourage them and encourage their work in our monthly meetings. And an interesting aspect which, which we saw happening were that teams individually would look at their individual provider rates and they wanted to be the best. So this would actually drive them to, to even higher quality measures. They wanted to, number one, be the best clinic within our organization, and they wanted to be the best team within the clinic. We also had some other benefits that we didn't realize uh, until the end. And one was that despite the fact that our MAs were actually being asked to do more work, they had increased satisfaction with their jobs. They really felt empowered by the fact that their work could be demonstrated to improve quality results um, for the organization. Of course, providers are happy because they're getting higher quality results with less work on their plate and their otherwise busy schedule. And then really a, a great benefit that we had was that um, we were chosen, because of our high screening rates, we were chosen to be part of a grant-funded project in which all of our kids who failed their autism screening could get fast-tracked into an evaluation by a developmental and behavioral specialist uh, in, in one of our behavioral health groups called Intermountain Behavioral Health. Now, in Tucson, Arizona, we don't have a lot of developmental specialists, so prior to this, any kids who, who had suspected autism, they would be referred, but there would be a one to two year wait to even get evaluated by an autism specialist. So the process that we had was we would identify these kids as positive on um, their screening tests or failed on their autism screening tests. We would fax the referral to Intermountain Behavioral Health. Intermountain would contact the family to bring them in for an evaluation. And then the provider team, the provider would get a weekly update on all of their patients who had been referred and what their status was, whether they were pending evaluation, whether the evaluation had been completed, and then finally, what was the outcome of their evaluation. And so I want to show and share with you kind of what our results for 2017 to 2018 were across the organization. We had a total of 842 kids who were actually screened for autism um, at their 24-month visit. Out of those, 112 had a positive or failed screening test, so they were suspected of having autism. Um, remarkably, 84 of those kids actually had an evaluation completed, so they, they went in and, and finished their evaluation. Of those 84, 66 kids um, were not confirmed with autism, but a large portion of them actually were identified with, most commonly, speech delay um, and were eligible for other services. And 22 of those children actually were eligible, uh, were diagnosed with autism and were eligible for treatment and started behavioral and developmental intervention um, right away. So this was really gratifying. Not only did we have the larger 
population health improvement in our screening rates, but we actually could see tangible benefits to our patients. So even though we were successful in this project, we were constantly thinking about ways that we could improve the process. And, and I wanted to just bring up some things we're working on currently. Um, one of the things is to try to move towards automating and less manual um, uh, scrubbing of data. And so what we are looking to see is, is how can we use next-gen our EHR to actually automatically identify gaps in care, um, like autism screening or even well checks, so we're not having to scrub that data. The second thing is um, not having these autism M chat screening tests manually uh, entered. I think we're moving towards this to try to have parents fill out the forms on a tablet so that they automatically populate our electronic health record. Uh, a new area which I think a lot of organizations are exploring is um, since we're really looking to improve quality, we want to tie our provider incentives to quality measures, and we're starting to do that this year by, by tying a portion of incentives to, to quality results. And obviously, nothing happens without our staff, and it only makes sense to include our staff into the incentive process for, for quality improvement. Um, this is a picture of our Southwest pediatric team, and we're, we're really proud of, of the work that they did. Um, I thank you for your time, and I do want to just say that the fact that we were able to do this work, this really came down to just organization and data, and I, I, I think hopefully this will encourage other organizations to take on uh, this quality improvement work and go on this journey, because it's very gratifying. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, we would like to thank our speaker from El Real Health for joining us today and sharing the Davy story. We would like to remind our listeners where to go find this and other Davy's Juice Case webinars and information on how to apply for Davy's. That information can be found at the posted at the Hems Davies Award website at hems.org backslash Davies. That is hymns.org backslash Davies. Again, thank you and have a nice day.